Greetings in the name of the Most High. I might owe you a couple because, and I have to find out where that other one was. Hopefully it'll be up online. I had one a few days ago and uh, uh, it's just in the, in the busyness of everything, it just didn't get done. You know, it didn't get logged in. And, and sometimes when that happens, I kind of go with it because it's sort of like I, I'm a believer in what, you know, when something is meant to be versus when it's forced. And this was sort of one of those, you know, I'm, I, never, I never question when there's a hesitation of a word going up. And I'm going to tell you today about uh, something. Um, Trish, would you mind bringing me my glasses? Sorry. Looks like she just got busy right when I said that at that very exact moment. What's that, I'll need my glasses here. I'm sorry. Need glasses? Yeah, for some reason, not my vision even on this big giant print is not coming through as it did. Not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out of the mouth defiles a man. Jesus said to his disciples, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. Now this is a prophetic statement. Every Every tree, every plant, this is multi-layered. Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. Not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out defiles a man. In other words, not just from man's mouth, but man's actions extend from his mouth, don't they? Right? Words and actions kind of go together. So it's not a stretch to think that which man plants, that which man creates, if it's not of God, shall be rooted up. It goes even further. Those, I know, but you don't get this. Those who are not mine will be rooted up those who from the beginning every plant so there are plants there's genome there are beings there are human beings every plant which my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up there's hybrids there's Things not of God that man has created for himself to expand. And I can even say this, that um, because the next line is, let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. Nations, governments, Santa Fe, for example, says we are an all-inclusive community, which means, and that's code, when they say inclusive, we're inclusive, that means we've gotten rid of God. Inclusive meaning anything but that which is of the Lord God, Yahweh. That's what inclusive means. Because... You can't have, uh, you cannot have any uh, other God besides God because it won't, it will conflict and they'll have to get rid of the original true God. Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They blind be blind leaders of the blind leaders, governments, bureaucracies, etc. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch, meaning the society will crumble. Then we go back to what comes out of the mouth of a man. 
But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man because they come from a wicked heart. Those people that are without God who are creating things out of their hearts, even hybrids, defiles the, the thing already and defiles the people who made it. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, fault witness, fault, false witness, and blasphemies. These are the things that defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Meaning that, um, you know, if the Lord feeds you, you know, if the Lord blesses it, no one can come against it. You know, don't worry about it. So the teaching, you know, extends. Uh, for the natural man, the idea that um, thoughts, Jesus raises the level of discourse to thoughts, meaning it's not what you do, but the thoughts you have that defile you. If you have thoughts of, you know, you entertain, th I know how it is. When you entertain thoughts of vengeance, for example, you fantasize about how you're going to kill the person over and over in a many, million, million different ways. Or lusting, how you're going to lust over them, what you're going to do when you finally get together in a million different ways, whatever it is. Now, those thoughts are to be brought under submission to the Lord. In other words, the response is when these thoughts enter in, it's an attack by Satan. The whole idea to keep the mind washed clean is to not let that seed get planted of the thought in the first place. In other words, root it out with the word of God, doing like what we're doing right now. Read the word of God and see how you want to cut that thought off at the past so it does not... Because thoughts are kind of like uh, trains. Once they get going, they start building momentum and building speed. It takes a while for them to get up to speed. And once they're up to speed, they're damn near impossible to stop. So what you want to do is root them out in the first place because entertaining them going down that road will lead to defilement of self which is exactly equal to cut off from God defilement of self equals cut off from God that's why they want you to defile your, yourselves uh, amongst them so they a have something on you yeah I guess b um, you know extract their pound of flesh for their uh, ritual purposes and uh, power sure Sure, they have you under control. They have power from you. Um, but to defile oneself through, and they'll, they'll get you to do it through, say, gossip. Gossip becomes like um, a ritual in a way. You know, they get you to say something against your brother in casual conversation. They kind of try to trick you into it. So they have something on you. You know, they have power over you at that point. They extracted a little bit of power from you right there. They, uh, I mean, when it gets, you know, really bad, they throw a uh, temptation of um, lust, you know, through sexual encounter or whatever, to a politician. And what happens? Oh, well, they just happen to have a record of it. And if it ever gets a, a word of that breathed out to law enforcement, who's also in their pocket of Satan, you know, <laughs> it's a way of getting everyone in his pocket eventually. Um, then um, if that politician doesn't stay in line, then we just trot out the evidence of what happened that particular day where he was allowed to indulge his flesh. He uh, defiled himself. And at the same time, that um, which is the father has not planted shall be rooted up. In other words, that person's dead. They're gone. I mean, they're now just a puppet, you know, a shell puppet. You know, a puppet looks like a peanut uh, or a, a, a shell of a nut, you know, with a string on it, like a puppet, you know, to, behaving like a human being. That which comes out of the mouth uh, is basically what Jesus is talking about is an unclean heart. He's talking about that which comes out of one's heart. And the mouth is simply a metaphor for the process of that which we're holding in our hearts. So since he's clarified it here, and my proof on it is, he says, uh, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile a man. So where does it defile? 
when it's in the heart? Or by the time it gets to the mouth? Well, he's talking about the heart. That's why we have songs that say, making me a new, you know, psalms that say, make me a new heart, Lord. Creating me a new heart, a new mind. What's Jesus, what's one of Jesus' names? One of Jesus' names is, I make all things new. I make all things new. I, I don't know what, how that would translate to a Hebrew name, but it, if you had one, that would be another name for Yeshua. I make all things new. Is Jesus, that's his name. Another prophetic statement by me. <laughs> and where's it coming from? I praise God, you know. We're going to talk about Rima versus people making stuff up in their minds and hearts. Because I can just tell you this. That which the Father has not planted shall be rooted up. If the Lord did not give you a prophecy, a teaching, a thing, a word to share, to pass on, it will be rooted up. Oh, don't tell me. Yes, I know the parable of the seed and the sower. Of, you know, some of the seed falls on good ground, some falls on, you know, when you're preaching the gospel. I'm talking about people that say, thus saith the Lord. I had this dream. I had this vision. I had this thing. If it's not of the Father, it will be rooted up. It will have no effect on the consciousness of people other than it's a passing fantasy. Conversely, and, and I mean additionally, so, sorry, not conversely, but additionally, that which is created of man without the Father shall also be broken down. If we try to build America as a secular society, it will be taken down. If the laws stand, however they got there, that God is outlawed from, uh, prayer is outlawed and things like that, the society will fall. The, 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 the powers that be do not worry about the churches, they already got them in their pocket. Lu Lucy has those in, their, in her pocket. I'm trying to vape on this thing. Not working too well. Well, it's probably because I I mixed it myself. Anyway, yeah, a great alternative to tobacco is vaping, and I prefer that. And I smoke cigarettes lately, and I really feel a need to repent on that, and so this is kind of my step out of it. Ah, you know, I mean, that in avoidance of... Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not doing other things. I don't want to indulge in anything. I don't want to indulge in overeating or drinking or anything like that right now. I'm just kind of cleaning up my act. But so the, the vape comes in as kind of a, you know, electronic e-cigarette. Comes in as kind of an interim that helps to, uh, you know, wean you off of, oh, I don't know, I got smoking tobacco. I just start, you know, having, how, how does anyone... Usually I've never had a problem. I've, I've started up and then eventually it just kind of peters out on its own. And that's how, how it is. I used to smoke cigars quite a bit. And, uh, and the same thing there. I just lost interest after a while. 